for them. Um, I like messy, noisy, vigorous public debate. I like an open marketplace of ideas. I'm a classical liberal. You know, and the, the, I, I, I am a, a worshipper of J.S. Mill. You know, I read and believe in On Liberty. I think it is a founding principle of Western civilization, you know, that people should be able to be, do, and say anything so long as it doesn't hurt other people, which is why this, that's why this country set up the way it is. You can believe what you want, you can say what you want, but when you strike somebody else, then the rules change. So when you're scheduled to speak at a place where, like what happened in Berkeley, happens, mm -hmm. and there's a risk of that happening again, mm -hmm. um, what's your point of view on whether or not you should go to that event? I bear absolutely no responsibility whatsoever for the violent actions of others, and I will never accept that I do, because once you do that, you award a heckler's veto to people who threaten violence against your, you or your audience, and it is just handing them a way of shutting you up. I will never accept responsibility for the violent acts of others, and nobody should ask me to. In the same way that if I lose my temper with somebody in the street and strike them, nobody is responsible but me. There is, a, there is a very clear distinction in law, in morality, in, you know, a very clear distinction, I think, in all right-thinking people. There's a difference between shouting with somebody and punching them. There's a difference between saying that I want to do something, like I'm going to steal you or whatever, and actually stealing it. Yeah? There's a big difference between speech and action. And the left wants to break down that distinction. You know why? Because they want to legitimize their own violent responses to other people's ideas. That's the root of safe space and trigger warning culture so in colleges. A big, there's a big conspiracy going on with the left. No, it's not a conspiracy. It is a political. Uh, it's, a, it's a. It's It's a. It's a political approach. It is a weapon of war. Right. It's not a conspiracy. The reason that um, liberals want to muddy the water between speech and action is to legitimize their own violent responses to conservatives' ideas. Mm -hmm. If you say, as they do, when I come onto campus that I represent a threat to student safety, yeah, mm -hmm. I don't. I'm like, I might be 6'2", but I'm skinny and I'm gay, and I don't re represent a threat to anyone's safety. I couldn't beat up a paper bag, right? But when you say that I represent a threat to student safety, you're implying something with that word the safe spaces and trigger warnings culture, all implies that there is some kind of physical threat or a threat that is equivalent to a physical threat and it is designed to legitimize a violent response. The college Republicans are upset that they're being asked to pay a lot of money to provide security or to pay for the security at these kinds of events. Well, they're upset because it's, uh, because it's a double standard, because if Lena Dunham or Amy Schumer were speaking, the college would not be requiring those security fees. Because so would there be that kind of violence expected at that kind of event? Well, they don't say anything interesting or controversial enough to, uh, to warrant that kind of uh, response. but. Take, for instance, uh, there, there are, I mean, there are left-wingers who attract protesters, right? There are. Um, and there are plenty of, and, and there are, for instance, Muslim hate preachers who have spoken at American universities who have attracted right-wing protesters, right? I have probably visited more college campuses than anybody else in the last year. And by the, the time my next tour finishes, I may have visited more college campuses than anybody in history. I have never heard of an instance of a prominent, controversial, left-wing author or thinker or speaker being prevented from speaking because the college insisted on thousands of dollars in security fees. It's remarkable how universities find these huge, deep pockets to magically waive security fees when the speaker has the right politics. When the speaker has the wrong politics, as I do, then you'll find universities trying to charge $46,000 for, for uh, three hours in an auditorium. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's something we're currently wrestling with for my next tour. $46,000. We asked for a single instance in the entire history of that institution when that fee has ever been charged to anybody else, and their response was to drop the fee by half. Mm. That tells you everything you need to know. Mm -hmm. And that is the double standard that the college Republicans are objecting to. So what are your future plans? Lots more on? drama, Touring. lots more chaos, <laughs> lots more of everything that people have come to know and are love. You, are you just a flamethrower? You're just out there just raising hell. Is that homophobic? I don't know. Um, well, I, didn't, I didn't intend it to be. So I know, I'm messing. Was, I'm, I'm messing. No, please don't apologize. I'm messing with you. Good grief. <laughs> um, I, I, uh, you've been in the system too long. Please. I, I guess so. Uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> no, I. Look. There seems to be this, this um, idea that you can't be a conservative and be funny, or you can't be a conservative and be provocative. John Oliver, John Stewart, Bill Maher, and I could list another 20. I could list another 20. Why can they do it and we can't? So you're, this is an act? No, I didn't say it was an act. John Stewart, does, John Stewart doesn't describe himself as an act. John Stewart described himself as John Stewart. He says he's a comedian, but he doesn't describe it as an act. Is Bill Maher an act? Bill Maher's never described himself as an act. Would you comedian. consider Bill Maher an act? He's a comedian. He's a comedian. Maybe I'm a comedian. 
Okay, now we're getting somewhere. Maybe I'm, yeah. maybe I'm both. Why has the left allowed people who speak intelligently about current affairs and crack jokes and upset people? Now, just, just let me, let me hear me out on this. Why has the left allowed these hybrid entertainment and current affairs figures, and the right isn't? There isn't a single example on the right. There's not a single Republican Is example. Is Culture and Act? No, I know, Anne. She's very sincere. And she's very serious. Anne's very serious. She's like a serious, sincere, like, severe person. I mean, she's, she's witty and barbed, and her books are like laugh out loud funny because she's got such a brilliant wit. But she's not a... Uh, Dennis she, Miller? I mean, they're pretty thin on the ground, aren't they? Name somebody with their own show, I, you know? Name somebody with their own primetime show, a current affairs show, where they do skits, tell jokes. If you were a center, like, okay, so imagine your son, right? You have a, did you have any children? Okay, so imagine if you did, you had a son, he turned out to be center right, shock horror, sorry. Um, he turns out to be center right, and he says, Dad, I want to watch something like, I don't know, Real Time, or The Tonight Show, or, um, you know, The Late Show, or whatever, but I'm a Republican. What do I watch? What do you answer? Well, in a couple of Maybe years, you'll be able to say the Milo show. But, okay. Um, Is that what you want to do? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Because um, I, I want to be the first of many. I want to be the first of dozens. But um, the main reason I want to do it is not because I want to strap myself to a, that kind of recording schedule, because, quite frankly, I like being on holiday and having a nice life. The reason I'm doing it is I'm like Cincinnatus. You know, it's, been, it's a duty. I have been, I have been called upon to, to pave the way for others. Uh, hopefully, I can retire by 50 or something. But the reason I'm doing it, and the reason I do everything I do, is to draw attention to hypocrisy and double standards. The reason I do everything is to make space for others. I don't want everybody to be like me. I don't want everybody to be a bomb thrower. I don't want everyone to be rude and mean and vindictive and spiteful and catty. You know? That's your thing. That's my thing. Right. That's my thing. <laughs> like, I, uh, that's, that's me. Right. But, but when Trump is outrageous and rude and when I am mean and spiteful and bitchy, both of us, by the way, normally write about it, or normally write about almost everything. Um, when we do that, we open up the space behind us for other people to speak more freely and to be more confident in expressing their views. And the Google memo disaster, which is what it was for the, for the company, uh, is the perfect demonstration of why we're both necessary. Because a reasonable, respectable, well-mannered guy who wasn't advocating for politics, he was advocating for science, got fired for bringing up the wrong studies. And that's why I'm not going anywhere, and that's why Donald Trump is in the White House. All right. So, what uh, channel would you be on? Do you think? Uh, are you talking? I don't know. I think it has to be the Milo or? network. If Oprah's got her own network, then I, can't, I don't see why I can't have one. Um, I mean, look, it would be nice to. I, my thing, unlike previous conservatives, is I like to park my tanks on their lawn. You know, other conservatives just will, will, you know, have think tanks and publish policy papers and write long essays. I like to actually do something. This is why I have a college tour. I actually show up. You know, I will go when I'm invited by college Republicans and actually show up and do something. I spend my own money and I go and I do it, you know? Mm -hmm. I actually give something of myself. Mm -hmm. Liberals do that, conservatives typically don't. Most conservatives in this country, establishment Republicans, incredibly self-serving. Um, you know, two-faced, duplicitous, self-serving um, waste of space. But I actually try to do something and go somewhere. And I'm, you know, imagine how much easier my life would be if I just pretended to be a liberal. Imagine like what the, I would have a TV show by now, you know. Imagine how much easier my life would be if I just went, if I just, if I just took the easy route. Well, but I'm trying to take the route that, uh, of integrity, you know. Mm -hmm. And so, when I show up, and I make make the space for other people to be to be more confident in what they have to say and to express themselves, um, I'm merely functioning as a symbol of what. The, the upper limit of free expression looks like. I'm not saying everybody should be like me, but I will tell you one thing. Having watched for the last 10 years, and gay is at the, the edge of culture. We're like the canaries in the coal mine, you know? We see stuff coming before everybody else because we're the ones who are going to the comedians who tell the most outrageous jokes and reading the books that say the worst things about people because we get off on that stuff. After 30 years of censorship from the left, something has changed. Something has changed in the American popular consciousness and the sympathy has gone from, let's be, the, the, the sentiment rather, has gone from let's be nice to people and not offend anyone to why are you stopping me from telling the truth? What have you got to hide? And it's gone from a sort of meek, let's not upset anyone, which plays into you know, the, the, the needs of social justice warriors, you know, um, who exploit people's desire to be nice.